When one is horrible, it means that there is nothing that is objectively good and progressive that will come out of such individual. If you have been convicted of an offense before and you have been pardoned, and anybody is trying to bring that up against you and calling you a convict, you have the power to sue that person for defamation. Justice must not only be done, but it must be seen by all to have been manifestly done. Every citizen has a right and every citizen has an obligation. That a plea of atrocious act or convict is very different from the plea of pardon. Trespass is that act that interferes with the peaceful no matter how mine is this, right? No matter how mine is. He who comes to equity must come with their hands. Hello out there. You are welcome to another fresh episode of the program Justifying Nigeria on ACNN Television, reaching you from Abuja. On today's episode, our subject of discussion will be on the legal concept of murder. My name is Anna Zichin, I'm so your uncle. It is no longer a news that the rate and toll of extrajudicial killings are increasing on a daily basis in Nigeria. A costly look at the current event happening around us reveals that people are being killed on the streets without any just cause. Just a few weeks ago, the killing of Mr. Michael Yusifataga, the chief executive officer of Super TV, by his mistress, Ms. Chidima Adoro Juku, a 21 year old, a 300 level student of the University of Lagos, went viral. Opinions are now divided on whether or not she should be charged for murder, having confessed by herself that she stabbed the disease to death with a knife. In our discussion today, we are going to extray the positions of the law as regards to the incident, excavate the rudiments and ingredients of murder. To make sense of this all, I'm being joined in the studio this morning with Barrister Joe Mobilaji. He is a leadership, clarity coach, and a personal development trainer, former president of Law Student Association, University of Abuja, and overall best student at the mock trial of the Nigerian Law School. He won the Best Orator Award by the Council of Legal Education, a member of Unity Bar, and also the principal partner of Chizu Law Firm, here in Abuja. You are welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We hear about murder. Yes. Whether you are a lawyer or a citizen, and you hear about murder. But yeah. you agree with me that people don't understand what murder is all about. Yeah. Let us start our discussion by telling us what murder is all about, maybe in general perspective mm -hmm. and in legal perspective. All right. Um, in a general perspective, you know, I like to bring it to a layman's view. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, murder is the killing of a person by another person. When you kill somebody or you, you commit a hurt or a harm to someone with the intention of killing the person. Now, from the legal point of view... So generally, once you just kill somebody, murder has been committed. Yes. That one, just kill someone, once cause you, harm. Yes, when you cause harm. Now, from a legal point of view, view it is the premeditated, unlawful premeditated killing unlawful so that means there are some killings that can be lawful and legitimate and legitimate yes. example for yeah. example when a soldier is defending the state when um, a person you're trying to avoid um, in self-defense maybe somebody's trying to kill you and then in self-defense you retaliate when they are trying to suppress an insurrection or a mutiny when a judge sits down on his bench and pass a death sentence upon somebody is, is that legitimate that's a lawful yes is so that lawful? yes within the ambience of yes, the law. That's yes if it yes. fulfills the ingredients that's exactly yes and he passes a death sentence upon yes, somebody. yes that's a lawful killing so any t any unlawful premeditated premeditated that means you envisage that this thing you are going to do is going to kill this person. So you are aware. You are aware. You are aware of your actions. You are fully conscious. You know the implications of your the actions you are taking, with to cause bodily harm or whatever. You know that the way you hit this person or this thing you do is likely to kill this person. Anytime that happens, the, pre, the unlawful premeditated killing of a person by another person is defined as murder. Murder in the legal perspective. The legal so perspective. unlawful premeditated that yes. you are aware of what you are about to do. Yes. That's what murder is all about. Yes. Now, you, you also agree with me that there must be some components or legal ingredients of this murder. Yes. Now, can we just tell our viewers what those things are so that okay. when they see it or when they look at a particular scenario case, yes. even if you're not a lawyer, you'll be able to know that 
yes. what have been committed. Exactly. What are those ingredients? So we have two major ingredients, canons, on which mother stands upon. You must fulfill these two major ingredients. Pillars. Two yes. pillars. Two pillars, yes. Thank you. Two pillars. One of them is actus reus. Okay. Another one is mens rea. Yes. You are speaking on legal terms. Yes, now so you have, have to break so it let down. Me break it down. <laughs> okay. let me, I just wanted to drop the ball <laughs> before I break it down. <laughs> okay, sir. So actus reus is the premeditated um, when someone causes bodily harm or physical action, actus reus, that means a physical action that is taken to cause some form of, some of, some of, form of bodily harm that would lead to the death of a person. That's actus reus. Yes, that's, that's actus reus. So when I, if I hit you, for example, just hit you, that's actus reus alone. That the, action, the action of hitting is what is referred to as actus reus. Mm -hmm. If I kick you, if I push you, and it leads to your death, that push alone is yes. actus reus. And that's number one that's pillar. That's one, one number one pillar. But it's not enough to, 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 to convict for murder. Because murder is a capital offense, which I'm going to talk about later. Okay. The second pillar is mens rea. That means you must have, which is where the premeditator comes, understood in, intentionally that this thing you are doing, this action I've taken, will lead to the death of this person. So, for example, when I push you, and I know a reasonable man, when he considers that push, understand that this push is sufficient to kill a person, then they can say that. Actus reus and mens rea was fulfilled. If I carry a knife and I stab you on your chest, that means it's considered that by a reasonable man that yeah. this is enough to kill. But for example, be, be, maybe... Because stabbing somebody with a knife, you don't expect the person to be filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you understand. And it depends on where you're stabbing. For example, if you stab someone on the leg, on the feet, do you get depending on the health condition of the person understand if the person is a fully healthy person and you maybe you just maybe a, a little cut and the person yeah. died you can say that was actus reus but there was no menstrual menstrual yes. there was no intention, intention. or premeditated it, to kill. kill or maybe you acted in provocation in the heat of the moment we are arguing and in that argument i just what's wrong with you and i just push you maybe not knowing you have a health it's, issue it's with your it. chest and i just pushed you why would you talk to me like that and that in aggravated the um, health condition and you died. You can say, yes, there was actus and um, there was men, um, actus, actus reus, yes, pushing you the action, the action. but there was no mens rea. And in that, in, in that case, when you are able to establish that, okay, there was just actus reus without mens rea, you can now say, okay, there was no murder, but it was manslaughter. Okay. On the, you now we have in, in Nigerian parlance, we have what we call the criminal code and the penal code. These are the laws that govern the various jurisdictions of um, criminal um, justice. In so where, where do we find um, criminal code now? Okay, so the criminal code. We well, are talking about jurisdiction. That's yes, what I'm jurisdiction. Asking, yeah. The criminal code is found in the southern part of Nigeria. Well, then why the penal the code? code is in the northern North. part of Nigeria. So since we are in FCT Abuja, the penal code is what is it's okay. Yes, it's, uh, applicable, here. applicable here. Now, if it's under the penal code, if it is mm, if it's um, premeditated killing that fulfills mens rea and actus reus. That means you, you, you committed the physical action and with the intention the to kill the person. Then you call it culpable homicide, punishable with death. That is what mm. is referred to, culpable homicide, punishable with death. That means the person has committed murder. But if it's under the penal code, which is in the South, okay. and you are commit the action with the intention of killing, is referred to as murder. Please come again so okay. that uh, we will right. understand you okay. very well. Yes. So let me let me take because now I'm yes. just trying to establish something. Yes. So if I commit the act with the intention of killing. Okay, that's the two cardinal points or yes. the two pillars are fulfilled. Are fulfilled. Yes, maybe you, you you did it here in Abuja. In Abuja. Which is north. Yes, which is the north. Which one will be applicable? Which law? The, is it penal, the penal code? code. Penal code. Then yes. we'll explain on and that. And now under the penal code, yes. the conviction or the sentences that will be passed is culpable homicide punishable with death. That means the person has committed with the popular what we know as murder, murder, which is punishable with death, which we'll talk about later. Then if the person committed just the action without the intention to kill, kill. is referred to as culpable homicide alone. In the north. In the north. In the north. You, you, that, that means you just committed the action, but there was no intention. And it's not punishable with death. Then if it's in the south, it is referred to as murder if you committed the action with the intention to kill. But if you committed the action without the intention to kill, it's referred to as manslaughter. In the, the south. south. So when we hear the popular manslaughter, manslaughter yes. is just that the person will not be punished with death. Death, yes. So that means it, it, there was only one cardinal and um, pillar that was fulfilled. That, oh, because there can, no, there can be no menstrual without actus reus. 
Yes, you can fulfill. So you can't have the intention without having committed the act. You must have committed. In short, for us to even be bringing you to court, it means the person is dead. For you to have been um, arrested, that means you have a hand in the killing. So what they now start looking at is because the first we must forget, we must not forget one pillar of the criminal justice system, is that the ground on which you must before a person can be convicted is that it must be beyond reasonable doubt. doubt. That means the court says it is better to release for 99 um, 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 guilty people to be sent scot free than for one innocent person to be convicted. That means the court would rather release 99 guilty people than sentence one innocent, innocent person. So the court must thoroughly. That's not about justice. Yes, it's justice. The court must thoroughly ensure that all the fundamental pillars to establish that this person has committed a crime because murder is a capital offense punishable with death mm -hmm. has been fulfilled that's why you must establish that the person committed the act which is the first thing and secondly you must establish that there was a mental intention to have committed harm when we see somebody dies what will be the punishment if those two capital points are not been achieved these are many more we'll be hearing from barrister joe when we come back please do join us again Hi, you're welcome to another segment of The Speaker, reaching you from ACNN Television in Abuja. On today's segment, we are looking at Mothering Nigeria or Mothering Nigeria. My name is Anozichi Nomsu. The word mothering is an act of care, love, mentorship, raising and sufficient parenting that comes from a mother to her children. This means that when a child undergoes adequate process of mothering, the product and end result of that child is satisfying, a defying, and as such a great asset to the entire society. On the other hand, mothering is unlawful killing of someone, and this can result to sorrow, pain, bitterness, acrimony, and unnecessary rancor. With the kind of unthinkable and inconceivable things happening in Nigeria, I'm persuaded to ask on whether we are living in a mother in Nigeria or a mother in Nigeria. You imagine a pathetic incident where students of Federal Government College in Benin Rikebi states we are kidnapped and several students injured in the process. Is that not a type of mother in Nigeria? The kidnapping and releasing of students of Federal College of Forestry and Mechanization is an example of modern Nigeria. In a situation where an innocent 18-year-old detained NSAS protester by name Kemishola Oguni gave birth in custody of the Nigerian Correctional Service in Ondo State is a perfect example of modern Nigeria. The mother of Mr. Mike Yusuf Ataga the chief executive officer of Super TV by his mistress, oh, side chick, Chedema Adoro Juku, a 21-year-old 300-level undergraduate student of the University of Lagos, is a clearer pointer to the fact that we are in a modern Nigeria. The arrest of a former vice chairman of Lagos Island East Local Council Development Area, Shekon Keinde, by the officers of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, for being in possession of grams of cocaine is indeed a perfect picture of a mother in Nigeria. When did Nigeria become the land of impossibilities? When did Nigeria become the land flowing with blood and human parts instead of milk and honey? When did Nigeria suddenly become a land where atrocities, evil deeds, and massive genocide is now a welcome development? When did Nigeria become a land where injustice now prevails over equity, good conscience, and natural justice? How can it be that Nigeria seems not to work? How can it be that Nigeria seems to be a failed state? How can it be that our political leaders seem not to care and provide for the electorates who elected them into the positions of authority they now occupy? How can it be that Nigerian politicians have suddenly forgotten that the evil that men do lives sweet and after death. How can it be 
the sentiments, tribalism, and ethnic extraction rules the affairs of men in Nigeria. How can it be? The Nigerians are enjoying the surrogate dance, not knowing that the surrogate dance is the dance of the spirits. All of all this can only exist in a modern Nigeria. When government does not show sympathy and empathy towards a people in times of their misfortune, is also another belief that we are living in a modern Nigeria. When the political elites keep on reserving lucrative jobs for their children, grandchildren, and the ones yet unborn, and intelligent graduates are roaming around the streets of this country, demonstrate the fact that we are dwelling in a modern Nigeria. When a super court bail of innocent citizens of Imo states is two million naira with a threat of tagging them as terrorists if they do not comply with all that terrifying and wicked bad conditions. Yet we have bandits, kidnappers, wicked henchmen going about freely with AK-47 rifles, cutlasses, machets, and daggers. Nobody have arrested them, let alone bailing them. Rather, an Islamic cleric is advocating on their behalf for government to engage them on a conference for a settlement terms is a fact that is visible to the blind and audible to the deaf that we are living in a modern Nigeria. In order to justify Nigeria, I therefore speak until we all, both leaders and the led, stop murdering this country either through personal and collective negative contributions, begin to be patriotic citizens by contributing our positive quota, no matter how little, become innovative, creative, and generational thinkers, having the mindset of working together as one people, one nation, one strength, by putting on the garment of indivisible and indissoluble unity in order to build a strong economy in a healthy nation, we shall continue to live in a modern Nigeria instead of a modern Nigeria. My name is Anose Chinomso. I just want to speak. Glad to know that you are still there, and we are still here in the studio with Barrister Joe Mobology. Uh, Barrister, sir, yes. before we went for break, you have explained all these actus reus and menstrual. Yes. Now, you agree with me a few weeks ago, this, there was this lady called Chide Mujuku, yes. that we have the story of him stabbing a man, yes. uh, Mr. Mike, Ataga, my, Michael Atago Yusifu, yes. yes, and all that. Now, the question is, uh, does that stabbing, Mm. of uh, Ms. Chidema Ojuku mm. to that man, I mean, Mr. Dego, does it constitute murder? Now, um, bringing back, it's a very sad event, first of all, for a young lady at her prime. It's a prime, a, years, 21 years. Just 21 years old in the university. It's very terrible. However, looking at it from a legal perspective, perspective, now, we just established that for you to be able to convict a mother, you must have committed the action, which is first, and you must have had the intention of killing. So, for example, we can see clearly from the facts that Chirima stabbed the, um, the, the, the deceased. She, she confessed to it in the videos, although as sad as that was, because I wish she had a lawyer to um, you know, guide, her. guide her. I'm not saying justice should have not been met, but I think there are proper procedures for that. But she confessed to the fact that she stabbed demand so we have fulfilled one ground one and you established your earlier explanation you're talking about depending and this yeah. one now is on the, neck. the neck so, so she stabbed him in the neck and they are the the police investigations reveal that those stabbings were multiple not just one so that means if you stab a person multiple times remember the the test the neatmos test is a reasonable man. If a reasonable man, not cheating man, not the not the suspect, not even the judge, the judge will look at it from a from a litmus point of view. If a reasonable man considers this, is this sufficient to kill a person when you are committing this action? Can the reasonable man say that ah, when I'm doing this thing, it is he has the capacity of killing? And looking at these two things, if you stab a person in the neck multiple, multiple times, times, obviously. There is a premeditated intention. So the, the menstrual now is fulfilled yes, and the actus reus is there exactly. now. Exactly. So if it depends on now the prosecution, how they present their case with um, hard evidence and facts to establish that yes, she committed the action and she had the intention, you know, to commit it. And then sometimes also intention is also looking at is it was the malice? Because sometimes you have to ground 
was there malice? Was the person having a malicious intention? Was there a grief? Was there envy, bitterness? These are things you have to look at because sometimes you just say, why did someone kill someone? Which is where we look at the defense because there are defenses where she can come from. So it's not that, oh, I just stab the person in his neck. The court also look at, did you have any intention to want to kill this person before? Was there any malice? And sadly, if I was to be on the prosecution's part, there was a statement she made in the video where she said, before they had had um, a, a sexual encounter and with each other, each and which she was not very happy about because of how he forced himself on her, so she was still angry. And then he, so you can see that they were ingredients of malice. They were ingredients on her part. On her part. They were ingredients of malice. But now, it will now be for the defense to look at different ways to see how they can exonerate her. But based on her conf confession alone, alone. They, are, they are the grounds of actus reus and mens rea, in my opinion, has been established. established. Okay, now, her. let's take away the confession. Let's just see that he has not, she has not confessed. Yes. And the police investigation on the locus in Kwasipu call it yes. at the place of the scene. Yes. Yes. Review that there was also multiple destiny. Yes. What happens even when she has not confessed? Uh, will you say that the presence of these two pillars of actus reus and mens rea? Now, the, the, if they see all those evidences of the blood and the, the other things, yes, and she has not confessed she has yet. Not confessed. Now, they confessed. Now they can establish a crime has been committed. Now what they will have to do is to get the evidence to see how they can trace it. So they have fingerprints, maybe captions of video footages, seeing her going to the place and come out witnesses establishing who was last seen with him can lead their investigation to getting her and establishing maybe actus reus. But the place of the menstrual will be done in court during cross-examination when they're asking her questions, when they put her on the stand under the very fires of cross-examination. That's why you said, had it been she had a lawyer, she wouldn't have been yeah, fast exactly. in making those yes. confessions. Because those confessions, you know, and it's, not, it's admissible because yes. it's not out of a duress. Yes, not out of duress. Yes. They, they didn't force her, they didn't cajole her. It was done in public, in front of even press men, not even the police. So naturally, that's why the law always says, you have a right to be silent mm. or, and you have a right to a lawyer. Your lawyer ought to be with you before you make any statement. And this is a guide I just want to give to people. Even if you've committed something, I'm not, I'm, not, um, I'm not covering up, but you have a right to remain silent and to ask for a lawyer. And if you cannot afford one, one can be provided by, 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 the, you, state. by the state. So till your lawyer is around, do not make any statement. You see, but oftentimes it's ignorance. Yes. Now, we're here to educate our viewers. Yes. Whereby, let's say, even in her confession, yes. maybe in the course of further investigation, yes. it was revealed somehow that that um, confession was obtained by fraud or misrepresentation of duress. What happened to that confession okay. statement? Okay, so once you can establish that a confession was made by duress, and all that, that's a ground to even in nullify the con confession. Because one of the very important elements of a confession st confessional statement is that it was made voluntarily without any duress. The confession must have been obtained. And one of the things that can always, when they were tendering a confessional statement, if you raise an objection to the voluntariness of the confessional statement, the court, to show you how important, the court will now conduct what they call a trial within the trial. What does that mean, sir? A trial within trial is that they will halt the process first. The, you know, when you are tendering the confessional statement, there's already an ongoing trial. Yes. Going. Like this issue of Chidema now. Yes. We are talking about murder. Yes, murder. And it was proved or uh, allegated that there was no uh, confessional statement that is voluntary. Yes, exactly. So they will stop that murder case. Yes. yes, so if they bring a confessional statement and, say, yes. and she says, I'm not the one that made this confessional statement, I'm not the one that made this statement, or I was forced, coerced. Yes. The court will say, okay, let's hold on. Let us now have a trial on this confessional statement. To ascertain whether, to ascertain whether it was made voluntarily. So the issue of murder will be kept aside. Will be kept aside, will be halted. And then like an interlocutory case where a trial within trial will be conducted, where the court will look at the veracity, the legitimacy, and the voluntariness of this confessional statement. And if the court arrives at the conclusion that it was not made voluntarily, the confessional statement will be kicked out, will be thrown out through the windows of the Temple of Justice, and they will be asked to redo, to, but it does not mean that it, she's automatically acquitted. Acquitted. Maybe the court might ask the prosecution to go back and provide more investigation. They might discharge her for the time being and keep her in holding, or maybe release her on bail, okay. and then ask the further, further investigation. investigation. And when they can probably get um, more evidence that can now hold, that they can now bring, refile the case. Thank you very much, sir. Now, do you think, now, as a lawyer, yeah. let's say you are now, uh, Chidemo, their family now yeah. calls you, do you think there's any defense, any legal defense on her part? 
Yes, there are a couple of defenses. Um, um, he, um, uh, although, sadly, I wish those videos were not taken, but we can still bring up. I know as it is now, they have called you. But it's so Joe, come and <laughs> present our daughter. What happens now? Well, I'll uh, just give them small so that they can come. That's right. I'll give them everything. <laughs> they will not pay my fees again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm All just right. joking. Yeah, but yeah, one of the yeah. things we can do is first, he made a statement that they were taking drugs at the time. And secondly, she was forced. Because, for example, one thing we must understand about rape is that if that a woman had allowed you to have sexual relations with her before, before. does not mean that the next time you do it without if you do it without her consent it constitutes rape okay. so in short rape is looking at even if she allows you to start touching her at any point she says stop and you continue and you continue it's rape. it's rape so if at that point like she said that she was being in with him and then he started to try force himself on her she said no and then she even alleged that he hit her, her head on the wall now if she noticed that there was a threat to her life and a response to that threat she tried because she said he was also suffocating her according to what she said well, in she the said, statement yeah, exactly. that he was suffocating her and in trying to get herself she was on the kitchen cabinet and she just grabbed the knife in impulse and stabbed him so it's a defense that's self-defense also if it was done in provocation if, for example, maybe self-defense can probably exonerate her from the crime. Provocation might not exonerate her, but maybe she'll be charged for manslaughter or culpable homicide, not punishable with death. So then maybe he said something or tried to do so, and she noticed that in the heat of it, he was he, he, a reasonable man at that point would not, because provocation is when you have gone beyond your ability to think properly. Mm. So for example, maybe you are saying certain things to me, and you are aggravating me, and I've done everything possible to get, leave the place, and I, I can't. And then you keep doing those things, and in the heat of the moment, I act. The court will see that, okay, I didn't have the intention, because naturally, I don't, and then you also look at the track record of the person. Does the person have this consistent pattern of maybe right. being violent and all that? If the person has not had those records before, so they can be ground that, okay, she might have been provoked. She was acting in self-defense. She was raped at the time. And in that rape, to the confusion of, because if a raped woman is in agony, she's wailing. She might not even be Definitely. thinking. And in that, in that, in that confusion, she might just act. So we can look at that too, that okay, she, as a young girl that is just trying to find her way, this man was in his 50s, overpowered her, tried to learn in the midst of all that confusion. She even, and then also you can look at intoxication. She was on drugs. She was not thinking properly. So that means a natural thinking person, because she said she took a couple of drugs. That's right. So that means she was not thinking in her right senses. Yes. And for her not to have been thinking in her right senses, you can claim that she was intoxicated because intoxication and sanity still almost stand side by side because you are not thinking in your right senses. Thank you very but all much. these things, however, will not exonerate her from the crime, but it might just give her a sentence of a manslaughter. Man's ameliorating the punishment. Yes, mitigating oh, yeah. it. Thank you very much. Now we just have a few minutes to go. Yes. First, mm. um, um, murder. Mm. Is it a capital offense? Then if the answer is yes, so depending, what is the penalty? Okay. So yes, murder is a capital In just a few minutes. Okay. Murder is a capital offense. That's number one. It's a yes. capital offense. Yes, it's a capital offense. Secondly, the penalty is death. Under section 221 of the penal code and section 319 of the um, criminal code states that any of the certain offenses, capital offense, which is murder falls under those categories, a couple of other of, of, of some of the others, state that the penalty for that is death. Also in section 33 of the 1999 constitution that also states the various right of a person, the right to life. Yeah. It also states that there are certain instances where a person's right to life can be deprived when he has taken the life of another person and when it is pronounced by a constitution of um, court of law. So if the court have seen that you have deprived of another person of his own life, then you should be deprived of your life too. Okay. So that is how they are looking at yeah, it. So, there's no, so there's no sentiment. There's no sentiment. Because you have deprived someone's well, life. Uh, of course, yes, yours should be deprived, deprived as well. Uh, especially when you it was done intentionally with the intention of taking another person's life but maybe in self-defense maybe somebody was trying to um, apprehend someone that was trying to escape from a crime or maybe in the suppression of an insurrection in a um, riot and all that someone is killed maybe uh, you can all look at that as um, defenses but when it was premeditated and the act was done the penalty Thank there. you very much. What's your last advice or word to the citizens out there? Okay. Fine. Well, using the case of this Chidima Ujuku, I would say, first of all, it's sad that um, young people should stay off drugs. But secondly, if you've committed an offense, you have a right to a lawyer. Do not make any statement to the media or to anyone. Always request for a lawyer. And if you don't have one, the state can provide one for you. Don't make 
utterances that can ground you in more trouble. A lawyer is there to represent your interest. Sadly, I, I, I will with the family of the Sufos and I pray that justice is done. And this is also an advice to many young people. You can't cut corners and processes. Go through the process of hard work in life. It pays to work hard and not to try and, you know, cut corners. It pays to work hard and not to try to cut corners. We have just said it there from him. We want to appreciate you, sir. Thank Mr. you very Joe much. for coming. Yes, and I know when next we call you out of your busy schedule, please try to oblige us. <laughs> Thank you very much. You Thank you very much. There is no way a crime can be justified in the existence of man. Once a crime such as murder has been committed, it is left in the hands of courts of competent jurisdiction to decide. One thing I know in all of this is that justice must be served at last, no matter how long it takes, because I still believe that justice delayed is never justice denied. Always remember to be a law-abiding citizen and clothe your character at all times with the garments of chastity and purity. This is where we draw the curtain on today's episode of Justify Nigeria. Join us same time, same station, another fresh episode of the program. Until then, this is Anose Chinomso, urging you the very best and bye for now. When one is horrible, it means that there is nothing that is objectively good and progressive that will come out of such individuals. If you have been convicted of an offence before and you have been pardoned and anybody is trying to bring that up against you and calling you a convict, you have the power to sue that person for defamation. Justice must not only be done, but it must be seen by all to have been manifestly done.